Howdy. I got to tell you the truth. I've been thinking about doing this particular video for a couple of days and a couple of days ago, something else happened and it kind of changed how I was going to do this or what I was going to talk about. And I decided I'm going to start with something totally different, but it still fits the topic of this video, which is talking about ethics and perspectives. So a couple of days ago, I wake up, I check the news, found out that OJ Simpson had passed away, 76 years old from some kind of cancer. And the thing is that there was a time period back in the 70s, even though Buffalo was not my favorite team, OJ Simpson was my favorite player. He played for Buffalo. I lived in Northern Maine. You saw OJ games every single week. And one of those years, he broke 2,000 yards in one year. And that was back when you only had 14 games. So that was just amazing at the time. And you were starting to see more prominent black players playing in football. So he was a hero to me. He was a hero to a lot of black people. He was a hero to a lot of people up north. So even though they supported the Patriots, you know, OJ Simpson, he seemed like he was one of us. I mean, Buffalo was getting a lot of snow. Trust me, where I lived, we got a lot of snow. And it was just one of those kind of things. And, you know, for a while, that's all I knew about OJ. He got, you know, traded to one of the Los Angeles teams. I think it was the Rams at the time. And he was never quite the same. And then he ends up in movies. So now he's doing some, you know, we used to call them the disaster movies. He's in a lot of those kind of things. Then he ends up in these comedy movies and whatever. And, you know, he was likable. So there was nothing, you know, we ever thought about. And then he wasn't in movies for a while. He did football on ABC on Monday nights. So, you know, he was just this guy that you just kind of knew. And then we heard about the murder of his ex-wife and his ex-wife's boyfriend. And you were just stunned. And this was breaking news. And no one knew where LJ was at the time. And then the next day, they, you know, found out where he was. He gets arrested. You have this trial. You have all this stuff that goes through. You had this thing with the Bronco. I'm sure a lot of folks may remember the Bronco. That was in 1994. So here we come up to 1995. And the trial is going on. And they're trying to prosecute him in, I think it was the city of California. But it was actually the state that was trying him for murder. And it was interesting TV. We never saw anything like that on regular TV. There was a channel that was called Court TV. And for a while, they were the biggest thing on TV because they came out around the time that this case was coming up. And OJ got acquitted. Now, here's an interesting thing. This is where we're going to talk about perspectives for a bit. I was one of those people who thought OJ was innocent. So when he got off, I was ecstatic. But I don't live in a black neighborhood. <laughs> and where I was working was not a black community. So a lot of those people didn't understand. How could I be pulling for OJ? Why did I do that? It turns out that 70% of black people thought OJ was innocent. 73% of white people thought OJ was guilty. We had a problem with race relations back at that time. You know, we had things where, well, we had Rodney King. If you don't know about Rodney King, go look it up. But he was brought out of his car and he was beaten up by a lot of police officers. I mean, they just beat this man up and they got it on video. And initially, the people who beat him up didn't get convicted of it. And then they got, him on, got those guys on something else and they went to jail. But that caused a major riot. And... That's one of those kind of things where, like I said, it didn't happen to me because I didn't live in that kind of neighborhood. But in the cities, because I you know, wasn't living in the cities at that time, that was happening all over the country, that kind of thing. And it became kind of a rallying cry. Around the same time, this was when there was a new kind of rap music that was coming out. You know, I used to love rap. And when it came out in the early 80s, it was just a New York State thing. And it was cool. And they just talked about, you know, dancing and all this other kind of stuff. And then you had uh, some stuff where they talked about what was going on in the inner cities. And then it just blew up. 
And in the early 90s, you ended up with NWA. I'm not going to tell y'all what NWA stands for, but I know you know the music. And the music was hard. This was hard rap. And then you had like the council of all these different uh, companies that are, you know, politicians, politicians, wives and whatever, who decided that they wanted warning labels on albums. Y'all see those now, but back then that wasn't a thing and it got passed. And the thing is that there was a lot of black music, mainly rap, that got those labels. So you had that happen and you just had all kinds of things. Ice-T came out with a record in 1992 after what happened to Rodney King in 1991. It was called Cop Killer. Oh my goodness. Ice-T, who now plays a police officer on TV, <laughs> back then, he came out with his group. They did this song. Oh, it got banned. It was banned. It was all other kinds of things to do. And you know what? A whole bunch of us got it. I didn't actually get it. But a friend of mine did. He let me borrow it so that I could get copies of it. And then it ended up on YouTube, you know, in the mid-2000s. But, you know, race relations were not necessarily good. So when you saw everything that was going on with OJ at the time, you just said, you know what? They're just railroading him because he's a famous black man. They're going to find ways to try to make this, you know, all this evidence that they say they have apply to him. And it didn't work out. It did not work out for the state. OJ got acquitted. I'm not going to get into any details. Y'all can go look it up. Matter of fact, check it out on Wikipedia. It's a very interesting read. Thing is, we didn't have Wikipedia back then. So, you know, we, as a matter of fact, we really didn't have a web back then. We kind of had a little something, but we didn't have anything that talked about stuff like this. So... OJ got off. And then 10 years later, they did another survey. And 10 years later, 87% of white people said, we think OJ is guilty. 73% of black people still think OJ is innocent. I didn't actually have a take at that time. You know, 1995, it was really bad. And, you know, that's just how things were. Getting into 2003, you know, I'm now a consultant. I'm working in a different kind of thing. I'm not watching as much TV as I was watching beforehand, except for Star Trek stuff. <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't really paying much attention to it. Nothing bad had happened in 2003. The OJ thing, it was like, okay, that's old news. I'm not necessarily thinking about it. Until 2007. When you hear that OJ and some other people decided to break into this guy's apartment in Las Vegas and beat him up because OJ somehow found out that this guy got a lot of the stuff that used to belong to OJ because there was a civil suit brought against OJ after the trial by the father of the man who was killed, who was going out with Nicole Simpson and Nicole Simpson's family. And they won this big judgment, something like $125 million. That's a lot of money now, but back then, that was equivalent of close to like, it was just a bunch of money. <laughs> it, was, it was big money. And OJ ended up not having to pay all of that, or he certainly didn't. What he did is he fled to Florida, moved all his stuff there. California could not get his money from Florida. They got some money, but they didn't get a lot of that stuff. But in 2007, OJ was arrested. 2008, OJ got convicted and he got 30 years in prison. Now he only went, I think, what did he get? I think he stayed in prison about nine years and then he got out because they said that he could come up for parole in nine years and I guess he behaved in prison. And I could see that happening. So anyway, by that time, now I thought about it and I said, you know, this is not the OJ Simpson that I thought OJ had been back in 1995. He certainly wasn't the OJ a lot of us thought he was back in 1972. I said, okay, now he's showing me that he's capable of doing something that bad. In some ways, I still didn't think he was smart enough to have gotten away with it in 1995. Um, if he had actually done it, 
But you never know. Nothing said that it necessarily all had to be him. Some of the evidence was circumstantial. Some of it showed him. But, you know, you can't have it both ways. But still, I started to change and say, you know what? Maybe there's something about OJ. You just have to own up to that. But I had perspective. A lot of other people had perspective. White folks never changed, though. <laughs> so even now, you know, when he passed away the other day, it was mainly white people who were on Threads, which is a social media site that, you know, Facebook created. And they were still saying all these things. There was a whole lot of jokes about it, whatever. I've never made jokes about someone who passed away. But I said, you know what? It's probably better that OJ is, is gone because we don't necessarily need to talk about that anymore. And we didn't. But I had to talk about that first because that came up. What I really wanted to start with, and that's where I'm going now, and, you know, we got the chapters here, is about J.K. Rowling. I've done a lot of videos on this channel where I've talked about Harry Potter stuff. But I also did one of, I think it was last September, October, it may have even been August, where I talked about the J.K. Rowling situation. You know, she wrote the Harry Potter stuff. Uh, she helped to get the movies made. All this stuff was popular. She was able to get the rights for Universal to do what they did in Orlando. I got to go to Harry Potter World. That's what I call it. I really don't know what they call it down there, but I just call it the Harry Potter World. I was fascinated by it. I am so deep into it. My goodness. I listen to all the books and I watch all the movies at least four times every year at least four times every year, which basically says that sometimes I do a lot more. <laughs> and in 2019, she got into this thing talking about how she didn't believe that in essence, there was such a thing as trans women. And she didn't believe that trans women should be able to use the same bathroom that women used. And she has just gone, in my terms, MAGA on this. And since she's British and it's not necessarily a political issue, I'm just saying MAGA, you know, it's my politics. But she just has gone way off the rails. And it's just so much kind of hate coming out of her. Now, here's the thing. Ethically, if I follow stuff that I sometimes do, I should be getting rid of all the books I should be getting rid of all the movies and I should never consume any of that stuff ever again. I shouldn't have my Harry Potter shirt. Well, my, you know, the Harry Potter shirt. I, there's a lot of other stuff that I have. I shouldn't have any of that. That's the ethics part. But here's the perspective part. The perspective part basically says that I got invested in this in the mid 2000s. I started with the wrong book because I didn't realize they were all in order. So I started with book five, realized at a certain point, you know what, some of this stuff doesn't make any sense. And I knew I had to start from the beginning and then the first, you know, movies and whatever. So then I started watching all the movies. I loved all the movies, loved all the books, got embedded in all this kind of stuff. And I got to a certain point where even in 2019, I was really upset with what she was saying. But the perspective is that this was a point of view she had. When she initially said something, and I talked to a lot of women that I know, and most of them said they weren't happy with what she, what she was saying, but they could understand her. They didn't agree with it. I mean, none of the women I asked agreed with her on it, but they understood it because, it, you know, there's this assumption that you can always tell if someone is trans. Now, I was a music and history major in college, which basically says I spent a lot of my time in the music and drama and art building with all kinds of people. So I met a lot of gay people back then. I didn't, you know, we didn't really have trans and I know someone's gonna throw up, you know, Renee Richards at some point. Y'all go look that up, you don't know who that is. But, you know, my thought was, Boy, I don't really know how to answer that because that's not anything that's going to impact me. I think that if someone believes that they're a woman, they had the surgery, they're doing everything else, they're taking, goodness, I can't remember the stuff that, you know, women take, you know, so that they can be more feminine. 
just like the ones who want to be men and they take the testosterone so they can be more like men. I don't know what that stuff is, but I didn't necessarily know if I could qualify as having an opinion based on the bathrooms. Truthfully, if I have my choice, <laughs> most of the time, if I have to go to the bathroom when I'm out and I can't lock the door, I like to take the one that basically says this is for, you know, either side. That's another only child thing. I hate having to use the bathroom out in public as much as I can. I try to stay away from that. That's just a me thing. So I decided at the time, you know what? No, I'm not getting rid of my Harry Potter stuff. I'm deeply disappointed in her. The Harry Potter people are disappointed in her. I said, you know what? That's good enough. She's not making any more money off me because I already have the stuff that I have. I'm not buying, you know, the legacy game because I don't play video games. So I figured, okay, I'm good with that. And then we had the stuff about really bad behavior. This is a, tang, a kind of thing with me where my ethics say, you know what, these folks have gone over the line. And the reason they went over the line is because of sexual assault. So who do we have? We got R. Kelly. We got Bill Cosby. We got Rick James. And a lot of you may not know this, but James Brown. And we had David Ruffin. Now those are five folks who I had their records. But to me, it's like, no, uh-uh, no. I mean, James Brown almost killed, uh, I can't remember her name right now, but she was 16 years old. And, you know, she was just a backup singer. And he didn't like the performance she did, and he almost killed her at 16 years old. And someone else had to go somewhere and call her mother and said, you need to come get your daughter. She's in a bad shape. And he never apologized for it, never owned up to it. She didn't say anything. You know, mother just took her home. I said, no, nah, I, can't, I can't deal with that. That's going way too far. So I threw out everything that I had of James Brown and Bill Cosby and all those folks because that's going over the edge. Luckily, I never had anything from that guy who, da, 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 da whatever that song was. I, <laughs> I only knew it because they played that song during sports. I don't even know if they still play that. Most of them probably don't anymore because then you found out that this guy was molesting children in all different kinds of countries. And I think he also did it in Britain. So he's been in prison forever. He's never getting out again. <sighs> to me, it's like, no, that's, really horrible you know one side person had has an opinion i d totally disagree with but i've already learned everything else you know i could tie her in with um let's see ender's game and orson scott card because ender's game i found out from a friend of mine back in the 1980s i love that book love that story so i, I bought the paperback book then I got the audio book. I've got it on my phone. If any time I want to listen to that, I can do that. Ender's Game. I didn't do the other two books that followed that same trilogy, but the first one, I popped that in all the time. And around the time that they were getting ready to release the movie, he decides to pop up in San Francisco and try to get a stop that allowed gay people to have certain rights in the state of California. It's like, oh, God. So he put his sense out there, decided he was gonna say this kind of thing. That turned a lot of people against the movie. The movie bombed. Now, I actually like that movie, but they took some liberties that, you know, kind of messed up the book a little bit. So that's why I stuck more with the book. But still, I thought the movie was okay. But a lot of people boycotted it because he had something to say. And what happened? California didn't pass what he was hoping for. And then he came out and he said, well, you know what? It's a moot point now. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to say anything else about it. But the damage for a lot of people was done at that point. But you know what? Once again, that was an opinion thing. This is something that I had gotten to love since the mid 80s. So I still have that. Like I said, sometimes it comes down to perspective. 
What is it that someone would have to do for you to totally say, that's it, I'm done with it? My perspectives, the way I see it, is different than younger people. Younger people are ready to hate everything immediately. You know, you got this thing about cancer culture. But I don't necessarily go to cancel culture unless I have researched something or checked something out for myself. I need to know what it is. Because we had this story last week where Dwayne The Rock Johnson went on Fox Spews. Yeah, that's what I call it. He did an interview and he said one thing that he wasn't going to endorse anybody this, you know, this year for president in 2020, he endorsed Biden, but he said that, you know, he had a problem with one little thing. So he wasn't going to endorse Biden. As a matter of fact, he didn't think he should be endorsing anybody else because of what he does. You know, you have this thing about cancel culture that's very you know dangerous these days and i wished he said i wished after i had said that i was going to support joe biden in 2020 that i hadn't said it and now i've just learned the lesson so you're not going to hear me do that for anybody and you know for some people in entertainment they don't want to do that kind of thing because you know no one really wants to get canceled for stuff in that way so he didn't want to do anything I found out about it because I'm on threads and all of a sudden all these things are coming in against Dwayne Johnson. And I'm like, wait, what happened? I, I totally missed it. And that was on a Friday, but WrestleMania was starting on Saturday. So I said, you know, it sounds like a work to me. I'm not going to immediately hate him right now. I'm not sure that there's a reason to hate him. I don't know, but I want to see what happens after the weekend. So after the weekend, you know, The Rock was in WrestleMania. He did his thing on the, you know, the Saturday night. And then on, on Monday morning, this thing came out where it showed what he actually said. And I've already told you what he actually said. He didn't say he was going to vote for the Orange Menace. He didn't say he was going to vote for Biden. What he said was, I want to keep this to myself. I don't want to publicly endorse anybody because there's no way you get through anything by taking a side. You're going to have one side or the other. It's going to be mad at you. I wish I hadn't done it before. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm keeping this to myself. You can't hate anybody for that. Everybody does not have to give their opinion on everything. Sure, I have. I no, I'm certainly not voting for the Orange Menace. I, you know, any chance I get, I'm going after him. Not as much on YouTube, but still, you know, 91 charges. He's already been convicted of one thing. He's got his trial starting on Monday for something else that he's probably going to get convicted on. We still got the thing in Georgia. We still got the thing in Washington D.C. And if Eileen Cannon stops being a fake judge, that's going to happen someday. I don't know. <sighs> but I understand, you know, certain perspectives. Um, but, you know, that you just have to kind of see things a certain way. Now, for the people who are just saying that they're going to vote for the Orange Menace because they think he's this and this and this and this, and there's all this other proof that he's not any of those things, you know, I'm not doing that in this video. I did another video uh, that I may link to after this one, you know, runs through. But I'd like to know what your thoughts are when you talk about ethics and perspectives. Do you think that there is a place, like I do, where you get to say, you know what, ethically, I should probably do this, but the perspective says that I should do it this way or I don't want to do it What's your thought? This is long. I'm sorry, but I just had to have my say. This isn't going to get a ton of views. <laughs> but we'll see where it goes. Anyway, my name is Mitch Mitchell. I've had my say. You have a chance to say yours. Y'all take care.